Welcome to Talking Technology with NCBI Labs, where we believe that technology is the single greatest enabler for people with sight loss and all disabilities. If you are interested in the latest technology news, products, and innovations, then you've come to the right place. Hello and welcome in to Talking Technology with NCBI Labs. It is our first podcast of September, episode 39. Yes, we are absolutely flying through the year. Would you believe it? I was listening to music yesterday on uh, YouTube Music and I actually got my first Christmas recommendation. It's a bit early for that now, in my humble opinion, but who knows? I'm uh, sure some are uh, getting ready already to... uh, Get ready and plan out the, make the plan, make the list and uh, get those orders in because Christmas is uh, right around the corner and uh, we're flying towards it pretty fast. But yes, hello, welcome in. Christmas aside, this isn't our Christmas episode just yet, to episode 39 of Talking Technology. Now I say 39, but I was told by a wise man this morning that if you put this Uh, Talking Technology podcast brand together with the NCBI Labs live events, which is what these uh, podcasts used to be called during the pandemic. This is actually our 100th podcast. So there you go. I was told that this morning. Uh, Really cool. So whether you view this as episode 100 or episode 39, a mere 39, welcome in. We hope you enjoy the great technology content we have coming up for you over the next little while. And today, well, what are we focusing on? Today, we are focusing on health tech. Now, it's an interesting one because for a lot of people with vision impairments or blindness or things like that, staying healthy, getting your amount of exercise and doing all these things, sometimes it can be a little tough. It's not as always, it's not always that easy to just head out for a run or even you know participate in blind sports you know we we do have the likes of vision sports ireland and and organizations like that and and teams like that to help with that but what about the basics simple things like weighing yourself and you know just little bits glucose monitoring all these small little bits that you have to do what kind of health tech is out there to help with that that's what we're looking at in this episode and we have a really cool uh, show coming up for you. We'll have Ger McHugh will be telling us all about uh, glucose monitoring. That's coming up later on in the show and we'll be taking a look and comparing talking scales versus smart scales. We'll be taking a look at that in just a few minutes but if you want to get in touch with us during the show, if you're joining us on Teams, you can use the Q&A panel. Just send your question or comment using the Q&A panel there in Microsoft Teams. Or maybe you're joining us via NCBI Live or you're listening on the podcast after the fact on YouTube or on the podcast apps. Then you can send an email to labs at ncbi.ie and we will be happy to get back to you. But now let's take a look at scales. Weighing yourself can be a surprisingly challenging concept to deal with and a surprisingly tough task, especially when you can't see the scales. Now, there are solutions out there and two options are to either use a talking scale or to use a smart scale. Now, what even are all these? Well, We took a look at both options and we're going to show you both options today and we're going to start with a smart scale. Now I've had a smart scale for quite a while but rather than uh, rather than explaining it let's go and take a listen to a demo with the smart scale but in order to do that well we need to go back in time don't we? Okay, apologies for the acoustics. I'm in a bathroom, which are uh, very echoey, to say the least. But in front of me, I have a Withings Smart Scale. Now, the model I have is slightly older. I don't even think they make this one uh, anymore. But they do have more advanced models now, and they're pretty similar from what I can tell. The only difference really is they measure more metrics. So, The one I've got here, it's got a plastic kind of underneath, feels very high quality. And if I tap it, you'll hear that the top is actually a solid pane of glass, really. So it's quite a solid piece of kit. Um, There is a screen on it. 
Um, but you can't feel where that screen is. And there is very, it's very difficult to know what direction the scale is facing. I think I have it correct now, but it is generally difficult to know what way the scale is facing. Um, but this doesn't talk or anything, but as I say, it's a smart scale. So how does that work? Well, basically this syncs to my phone. Um, so as soon as I step on the scale, it does two things. It gives a measurement and then it analyzes who it thinks I am. So you can have multiple profiles on it. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Um, but once it recognizes who you are, it will send the details to the app on the respective person's phone. So in this case, it should send it to me. Now, the thing to be aware of with this is that sometimes it might not be sure if particularly, for example, if you and uh, someone you're living with maybe have very similar weights, that might cause an issue for this scale. But uh, it will display on the screen um, who it thinks the potential options might be. And it will then ask you to tilt left or right to make a selection and confirm who you are. That process is inaccessible, basically totally inaccessible. Um, for me, it's just a case of stand on, hope that it gets it right, uh, which to be fair, usually it does, um, and just trust it. But if there is lots of you in the house who have similar weights and you're all going to be using the same scale, then that can cause a little bit of trouble. So just be aware of that. Um, but other than that, it's a pretty neat product. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand on the scale. I'm going to uh, stop talking because uh, I think you're not supposed to talk when uh, weighing on this scale. I don't know why or I don't know is that the case for all scales, but I'm just going to step on. I'm standing on. Okay, I've given that a second, so I'm going to step off now. Um, <laughs> I don't know whether it's weighed me or anything, but I kind of trust that it has. I've kind of learned to just, you have to trust this thing. Um, for some people, that might be very annoying. Um, certainly, uh, when we compare this with, you know, a, a talking scale, which we'll look at in a bit, but I kind of trust that it's done something. So... In theory now, it should have weighed me, analyzed that, okay, this is David, and sent the details over to my Withings app. Withings is the company, as I said, that make this. The Withings app will then sync it with the Health app. So you now have two options as to how you'd like to access the findings from this scale. So let's take a look at that. So the scales should have sent my weight to my phone and I now have two ways that I can check this. I can either use the Withings app or I can use the Health app. So I've got both apps here on my phone and I'll show you both. So uh, let's start with the Withings app. I've got voiceover turned on. Withings, five new items. And I'll double tap to open. Withings, button. Now, there are a number of inaccessible buttons around. So if you're just flicking, you will find a lot of unlabeled buttons. Button. Button. But I would recommend dragging your finger around because it is actually usable in that way. Good morning, David. Why, thank you. So uh, just underneath this heading, uh, I know that there is like a notification thing about like upcoming uh, things from Withings, uh, changes that it might like you to make, just general notifications and information, really. Comma, Apple Health Improvements. Apple Health integration has gotten better. Tap to review and allow synchronization of new types. Scan Watch 2 and Scan Watch Lite. It's time to meet your new health companions. So those are those kind of announcements there. But the interesting bit comes if I flick a little more here. Button, button, latest measurements, heading. Latest measurements. So I can go here and I can see my weight just by flicking. Comma, delete, share, weight, 6, 31 a.m., 91.7 kilograms, 
gaining weight button. So there you see 91.7 kilograms gaining weight. So that's all the information I need to know. Uh, that's uh, also, you'll notice there that it's factoring in my uh, previous measurements. So it's able to take a trend from that, which is really cool. And that can be useful uh, rather than having to remember what was my weight last time. Uh, it has it all there for you. There are four tabs at the bottom of the app. Tab bar, selected, home, tab, what measure, tab, devices, tab, profile, tab, 404. The measure app it provides a lot of similar information to the home app uh, or to the home tab, I should say. Measure, tab, selected, measure. There are equally uh, many inaccessible buttons. Button, button. But there is... Um, like the measurement here and it does read slightly nicer with voiceover in my opinion compared to the home uh, tab all health data past seven days weight 6 31 a.m 91.7 kilograms gaining weight button so it has it there it's the same information on its core but it just reads it a little bit nicer it doesn't blend it in with the delete and the share and all that uh, there's a devices tab which is for like controlling tab the actual bar, scales device, profile t- devices Oops. tab Selected devices. So body. So mine is the Withings body. It's one of the earlier scales, but I can flick through here. Sixty-four percent. So that's the battery level. Unknown measurements. In the unknown measurements section, if it's unsure of a measurement, it'll show up in there, and you can assign that to you. Or if it's not yours, you can leave it alone. Uh, usually, it will ask you if you're on the scales to tilt uh, or lean to uh, decide who. Uh, the measurement should go to but as I say that's an inaccessible process Uh, doing it in app is more accessible Um, so that's one to note it is possible to assign unknown measurements but just not using the scale you will need to use the app for that customize screens customize screens share update wi-fi configuration all self-explanatory help center Really just the standard in-app device setting stuff, really. And then the only other tab is your profile tab. Tab bar, profile, tab, 404. And again, profile, that's tab. all standard stuff, really. Um, it's Look, it's not the most accessible of apps. I can't say that it is. It does have a lot of unlabeled buttons. It's a bit clunky to use. And seeing the history is also a bit just awkward. Um, so for that reason, I would recommend taking a look at the health app the standard apple health app it's a bit more of a nicer kind of cleaner experience so let's take a look at that now apps health active and i'll jump health, over to the active, health app health, okay browse, so if you have uh something like an apple watch or uh, a product like that uh, you'll possibly be quite familiar with this app um there are three tabs along the bottom. Tab bar, summary, t- sharing, selected, browse, tab, three. And uh, it breaks everything down into uh, different categories. So I'm in the browse tab here. Search, search field, health categories, heading. And I can flick through the different health categories. Activity, body measurements, cycle tracking, hearing, button, heart, but medications, mental well-being, mobility, button. And so on and so forth. They just keep going here. Nutrition, but You know, all those different bits and bobs, you know, nutrition, respiratory, all these different things. And depending on what devices you have, whether it's an Apple Watch, whether it's a smart scale or whatever the case may be, it will add information that you can then keep track of in these categories. So... I have the scale, so I'm going to head back up here to body measurements. Moment, med, heart, hearing, cycled, body measurements, button. Double tap. Today, heading. And I can just flick through and get today's measurements. Body mass index, 6, 31 a.m. Average, 26.8 BMI. Audiograph available. The x-axis is date. The y-axis is value. There are two data series. And uh, we'll look at those audiographs in a second because that's a really interesting way to uh, to navigate this information. Weight, 6, 31 a.m. And I can go through the weight there. Weight, 6, well. 31 a.m. Average, 91.78 kilograms. So I actually have slightly more detail here than in the Withings app. Uh, there are two decimal points there. Uh, and I'm also getting my BMI. But let's pop in here by double tapping. Day, button, 1 of 5. And I can adjust the uh, point at which I want to see. Selected. Week. 
month, but six months, year, button. So five if I five. go to year. Selected, year, five of five. And then keep flicking. Average, 88.48 kilograms, October, 2022, October, 2023. Uh, it gives the information that I need there. But the really cool thing, uh, one of the reasons I really think this app is better than the standard Withings app is the uh, audio uh, charts. So if I just flick October and I'll pause that for a second. So you'll hear when I tap this that there's an audio chart available. October, October 2022. Weight average 88.69 kilograms. Uh, it didn't say it there, but there is. Um, I don't know why it isn't saying it there. But if I just do a uh, flick up, I should be able to find the uh, the play audio chart. Describe chart, chart details, play audio graph. And I can then double tap and you'll hear the pitch go up and down. And this is a reflection of uh, my uh, weight increasing and decreasing over the past year. Complete. So there, you can hear that it, um, so it basically uh, went down for a bit, uh, stayed steady for a bit, and then I gained weight for a bit. So uh, quite a neat process. And you will have heard, if you're listening to the podcast in headphones as well, you will have heard that as that pitch changed, it moved from left to right in your ears, a bit like you're using something like Soundscape. So it will have moved from left to right. So it starts on the left at the start of the year and then it moves to the right as the year progresses. If I go back, I can do body similarly. Back uh, I can do a similar thing with a BMI. Body for measure, example. weight, body mass index, six, day, button. One so of five. I'll just go to year. Select month, se- year, button, five, selected, year, five of five, October, tw- describe chart, chart detail, play audio graph. And double tap to play audio graph. complete and there you go it's a nice experience i must say i think this is a really cool and neat experience i think the health app in general is really good and using it with the smart scales is a generally positive experience in my view the withings app i would be leaving alone i don't think it's a great experience and the scale is in terms of its accessibility it's very much middle of the road here because it is awkward for example with those measurements and things like that and it's not particularly tactile in knowing what way the scale is facing so i'm really interested to see uh, joe's solution which is just a ta- standard talking scale uh, because that's going to provide a quicker solution but uh for me i am a fan of having the like continuous logging and things like that i think there there's great benefit in that but is it the nicest experience no is it the quickest experience no so it depends on what you you're looking for really um but let's take a look at joe's solution hi guys i'm here to talk about uh basic talking weighing scales this weighing scale is not smart it just uh, basically tells you your weight as you step on it you can have um your weight read out to you in um pounds um kilograms or stone so I like to use stone, so that's that's what I have it set on. Uh, the um, way you change the settings at the back, it's not great really because it doesn't tell you, um, you have two little buttons, one for setting it and one for changing it. It changes language and then the different metrics, but um, it doesn't actually speak out to you when, when you press the two buttons. So it's a bit like um, fiddling around with um, a talking watch. It can be um, a little bit difficult at first. Um, so I just leave it on the stone. And if once you find a setting you like, just leave it on that one. And it turns off automatically after you um, get off of it. So this is a brand called Terralon. Um, I think it's T-E-R-R-A-I-L-L-O-N. Um, not sure if NCBI sell that anymore, but they at the moment they sell a cobalt version of the talking weighing scales, which is 55 euros. So I'm going to go up on this one. This is the same idea. And see, see how we go. 
So I'm going to put the microphone down closer to the floor. Okay, so it successfully gives me my weight, and um, if you, you you can you can try it a couple of times just to collaborate it and make sure it's weighing correctly, or you can move it to a different part of the floor. But there, that's an example of it reading. Um, if you can't see the digital um, screen on a weighing scales, that is one example of finding out your weight and successfully monitoring it. It's an interesting one, isn't it? It's uh, that, that that talking scales. It really reminds me of those uh, them talking clocks. It's three forty eight. You are ten pounds ten ounces. Anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, really really cool. It's a much simpler experience than the one I'm uh, using, Joe. Uh, you're there, I think. It's uh, how do you find those two? Listening to the comparisons, I mean, one clearly much simpler than the other. But you're kind of getting more detail with the smart scale. Which do you think kind of works better? Or what's your impressions of it? Um, yeah, it, it's going to depend on, on the person uh, that uses it. Uh, some people don't use smartphones, so I presume they'll have no um, use for the wind uh, scales. And if you just want to monitor, monitor your weight and uh, you're not overly concerned about all the other statistics, um, the basic... And analog um, weighing skills, for um, lack of another word, is um, is is a perfect option. I'm I'm quite happy with the um, normal uh, analog weighing skills. I usually love smart stuff, but um, for weighing skills, I think just finding out my weight is quite enough for me. I I would like a little bit more information when I'm playing around with the settings. Like um, it's it's quite difficult if you knock it off of the right metric for you it's quite difficult to get it back to um, stones or kilograms or whatever you prefer. Um, it takes a little bit of uh, missing, you know, with the two buttons. Yeah. Because it doesn't announce to you what one you're on when you're changing, if you know what I mean. Do you think, like, you know, that Withings app, for example, as we flick through it, there were a few unlabeled buttons. It wasn't, it wasn't perfect by any means. Do you think, like, if the app was more accessible and, like, the, the health app for sure is quite accessible, but do you think if the product was slightly more accessible or were there, there were less caveats with it, do you think that would make it justify itself a bit more for you? Or do you just think the quick convenience of the talking scale is the better option for you? Um. It, that Williams app is quite typical of a lot of those apps in that space, I've noticed, um, where you have four or five different buttons that are unlabeled and some of the important buttons are labeled. Um, but, uh, yeah, at least I was quite impressed with the um, health app when, when you went through the demo of the health app and the fact that charts were, were labeled and you could understand them fairly clearly. Yeah. But um, I didn't really like the fact when you stood up in the scales, you got no feedback to tell you no beep or anything you really to say that you've completed your uh, weight you can now get off or anything you know what yeah, I mean for sure whereas yeah. at least with the at least with the analog one it does announce out loud your weight whether you like it or not yeah, <laughs> yeah house, no, I mean, house it's, it, it's interesting it, because it's like with the the withings one there is like a screen as i said on the device uh yeah. but but you're right there's absolutely no audio feedback to tell you you know when you can even just something as simple as when you get off you kind of you, you have to do guesswork i'll generally like yeah you, you know uh stand on it for like 15 20 seconds I, <clears throat> I cut that down for time there in that edit but it's it's one of these things where you just have to like as i said you have to trust it and that's not really a yeah. great position to be in in many respects well i suppose just in our conversation there after discovering one um I suppose point it's uh, more discreet to use the Whittings one, but um, I suppose look a lot of times if you're weighing yourself, what you close the door, or the bedroom, or, or bathroom, and, and and you're okay. Sure, but, or in our yeah, case, we I, just I, do it in front yeah. of the nation on a podcast. Well, yeah, that's that's true. Luckily, I'm not sensitive about my weight. Um, <laughs> Me neither. Thank but look, you. it's good. It's good for weight on before Christmas anyway for the winter, isn't it? David? Ah, there you go. Just, uh, As yeah. we were saying in the the chat internally here, we were saying that uh, all my weight that's a, that's a microphone. That's not my actual weight. <laughs> 
But, yeah, yeah. Well, someone else just suggested it might have been in your wallet. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah the, so definitely yeah. not. But yeah, yeah, no. Look, uh, jokes out of the way. As as I said, it's it's it's. Look, look, they both have their good points and um, uses, but I, I, as I said, I, I just prefer because it's just the weighing scales, and um, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's, it's good to have a, a chart and a data to um, track what you, every day you stood up on it and um, see how you are at the start of the year compared to now. Sure. Um, but, but it depends on the person again. But yeah, they both have their uses. One is cheaper than the other as well, I suppose. Um, yeah, you can get a talk and weighing scales from between 35 and 55 euros that don't connect to any other devices. And your one, I'm not sure how much was your one. Uh, yeah, so our one, uh, we got our one on the cheaper side because it's a much older model. The newer ones, they, they uh, do a, a few more metrics and so on. But I was looking on Amazon this morning. You're looking at around 70 quid now. Kind of would be the ballpark, you know. Um, but yeah, for, like from my part, I'm happy with the Withing scale. Is it perfect? No, it's not. Um, a, a few kind of key little points that I would suggest if you are going to get it, and if you have low vision, I would suggest getting the white one because you might find it easier and more distinctive to align the black screen with the white body of the device. I find because ours is all black it's very difficult to know are you stepping onto it the right way around, if you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I understand. Or are you stepping on sideways or whatever, do you know? So little things like that, you know, I would recommend if you are getting one, try and get one that isn't purely black. That I think was a mistake we made. But generally I've been happy with the product. It's been reliable, but it's certainly, there are definitely advantages to the actual just quick hop on what's my weight hop off again solution i think there is uh, and yours i think was much quicker too um, yeah it was quite quite quick actually probably 30 seconds by the time you've um, stood on it said hello to confirm you stood on yeah and then it recalls your weight within the 30 seconds i I reckon yeah or even faster it sounded like but yeah it's like yeah, it seems like a much snappier uh, experience compared to the Withings. But yeah, as you say, Joe, pros and cons to both. Um, yeah. So, Joe, thank you so much for telling us about the, the scales. It, it can be a difficult one, as I say, to weigh yourself sometimes with a, a vision impairment. Or, uh, but the, it is good to know that there are solutions out there. They're not perfect necessarily, but uh, you have a pick there. You, you have two choices that you can choose from from that alone. And uh it's good to do research on these things too because you never know what's out there but yeah thank exactly. you very much joe um and if you have questions or comments or want to share your experience please do send us an email labs at ncbi.ie is the email or maybe if you want to make a comment now feel free to use the q a panel if you're joining us on microsoft teams now a really interesting one that has really taken off in recent years is the whole world of blood glucose monitoring and Jer McHugh joins us now by phone to tell us all about his experience of using his phone for doing exactly that. Jer, how are you? Not too bad, David, and yourself? Not bad at all. So, Jer, first of all, uh, blood glucose monitoring, traditionally, this had to be done with, uh, I, I don't have diabetes or anything like that myself. I've never had to do this on an ongoing basis. But traditionally, this would have been done through some form of blood test that had to be done through like a kind of injection kind of setup. But now things are changing. Do you want to kind of explain how things work and the way you're doing well, I, things? I, I, I suppose I'll go back a little bit further than that now. I, I'm diabetic about 50 years, so in 1972... I was two and a half when I got it. Like, so back then you were doing urine samples, sure. dropping tablets into the urine, and realistically that was testing from the day before sugar. Yes. But in recent times things have come on. Like you would have a, 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 a meter with a, a, a test strip, and you'd put the test strip in, and you'd prick your finger, and you put the blood onto the test strip in a particular spot, and lovely stuff, and you got your results and yep. grand job and all gone well. You were spot on or as close would have made no difference like but nowadays there's these scanners and they you can you, you have two types of scanner one is a kind of a flash scanner and one is one that is constantly connected okay 
Interesting. Now, and the before one that we... I currently use is the Libra Freestyle, which is just a, a flash scanner, an NFC scanner. Like. Okay, interesting. Now, before we kind of just go on to the discussing that uh, Libra Free uh, solution that you mentioned, um, you know, how accessible were things when you were doing, like, obviously things like urine samples and using, um, you know, uh, blood tests and stuff like that. How accessible is something like that for people who are low vision or have no vision? Uh, not at all. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Hence the reason I had to go for the, the scanner. So that was a, a, a conscious decision on your part. Did, like, sight loss play a part in that decision? Yeah, I, I, I have diabetic retinopathy. Okay. And uh, back about five years ago, I had a stroke which sped up the loss of the eyesight. Like, mm-hmm. and within that five years, then I I moved over to the the scanning system. Like, okay, interesting. Because realistically, I couldn't I couldn't use the blood strips. Like, I was putting in the strips backwards, upside down, the wrong way around, and yeah. even when I was taking the blood off the finger. I couldn't put it on. I, I didn't know if there was blood on my finger. Yes. I couldn't put it onto the onto the strip. So I had to go for a different system. So went like I said, went for the scanning system. Like Okay, so do you want to tell me how does that work for you now? So you have a, a little uh, thing in your arm. Do you want to kind of describe where it is and how you use it? Basically, it's on the top section of my arm, kind of between my shoulder and my, my elbow. And kind of around, not quite fully the back, but but within reach that you can reach it, like where it, once you can reach it, like, and it's around about the same size as a, uh, a two euro coin. Okay. And it's it's it lasts for about twenty days, give or take. Now it'll only last twenty days, but some of the, some other models might last a little bit shorter. Other ones might maybe last a bit longer. I don't yeah. know. I'm not an expert on all the all the different ones that are there, like. Yeah. But um, you basically plunge it into your arm. Now, there's a kind of a device to plunge it in, kind of like the same size as um, uh, an egg cup, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, but it's especially designed for doing it. Like, now, it's painless, but it sounds worse than it is. I was going to say, big... like, it, is it painless, like? Oh, well, yeah. Now, the, the, needle, the little needle that's in it is about the thickness of a hair, like. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you'd never feel like an ongoing like pain having this yoke no, hanging out of you constantly. No, no. And like that, it's it stuck to your arm. So I, 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 I can get a shower and there's no problem. I can wash and everything else. There's no hassle. And it doesn't interfere with the, um, with the actual sensor itself. Like. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. So then yeah. you want to take a measurement, you know, what's the process like then? How does that work? You have an app on your phone, is it? Well, yeah, you have the the actual scanning machine, which unfortunately doesn't talk yet. Okay. But the app on the phone does. That's so when I when I scan it with say the machine, the actual proper the the Libra freestyle scanner, yeah, it will take it in, and that's the device I'll hand into the doctors when I go to my diabetic clinic and say, "There you go, there's my measurements for the last five or six months, whatever it is." Whereas on the, the phone, once I have the app on the phone, it it will call it out and say 5.6, 5.4, whatever, blah, yeah. blah, whatever it is. like. Yeah. And, and it can call it out. And the phone will also keep a record on it. Like, But it's just easier to keep because in the diabetic clinic, they have a device to download the reading from the, the, the actual Libra freestyle. So would you generally find yourself scanning with both then to keep a record yeah, yeah. okay yeah, interesting yeah. um do you find it a more or a less involved process than the way things were before or is it about the same it's 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 less less involved in in the sense that like i i can scan it it, it would literally take two seconds to scan it Whereas doing an actual blood test could take you a couple of minutes to get it done and up, set up and up and running and pricking the finger and getting the blood onto the thing. Like, yeah, yeah, for it's, sure. It's much, much easier to do the, the scanning. Like, Have you ever been tempted to go down the road of the continuous uh, glucose monitoring with those ones that are always connected? 
Uh, no, it's just for me, I find the one that that if I feel up or down, I can say, right, well, let's just get a quick scan, grand job. Like, yeah. Uh, my, my father has one of the Dexcom ones. Yes. And it's continuous. So it's it's always it's always reading on the phone like. Yeah, that's interesting. All we he all have... he has to do is look at look at the phone and it'll 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 give him a warning if he's down or it'll give him a war- warning if he's high. Yeah, that's interesting because we have um I I've worked with a few uh service users now who who are using uh the Dexcoms. Uh usually the Dexcom G7 uh haven't come across one uh, people really with the other devices but uh, they seem to be relatively accessible, which is good uh, with things like voiceover yeah. and stuff. So it, it seems yeah. like there yeah. are good kind of solutions out there for uh, glucose monitoring, it would seem. And and, and uh, now, uh, again, I'm, I'm not an expert on in relation to all the different setups that are there. I'm also aware that there may be a Libra, a Freestyle Libra 2, which is the continuous measurement as well. But it's just I haven't gone to that stage. Like it just says, nah. Yeah, I'm happy enough to scan it whenever it suits me. Like, and look, it, it, you know, the, sometimes you know it, it's handy to know continuously, and it, it depends on your circumstance, really, doesn't it? It it depends well, on, well, well, and that's something well, that, you need that, to discuss it, with a diabetic doctor too. It, exactly, like, and 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 a lot of these ones who are on the continuous one, now, not my father, he's not insulin dependent. He's type two, that diabetic, I'm type one. Um, and it, what what they're using it for is for better control of the likes of the insulin pump. Yes, yeah, that's really so interesting. In other words, it's it's connected to the insulin pump, and it tells the insulin pump whether to in, increase insulin, decrease insulin, or give the correct amount of insulin. Whereas I'm doing needles into myself, I'm stabbing myself four times a day. Like, yeah, yeah. So it, 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 it's it's a slightly different setup, like. That's interesting, but generally you find it to be uh, quite accessible. Then, like you, uh, do you have a uh, kind of what level of vision do you have? If you don't mind me asking, do you have like an okay-ish level of vision, or uh, it's gotten worse? You mentioned in recent years, it, it it has it has got a lot worse in the last kind of within the last five years now. I'm sitting in my kitchen here now, and I I these LED big big like you remember the old fluorescent lights from years ago. Yeah. They're about five foot long. But I, I have LED versions of those. I have them on. If I'm doing anything in the kitchen, I have to have them on. Yeah, that's now, interesting. I, so I can, would I can you see be able very to little see... else around the room. Like, but once they're there, once they're there I, I go towards the light. You know, that kind of way. Yeah. So would you ever be able to see, say, the, the text in the... Um, in the Libra Free app or anything like that? Or, or do you rely totally on the speech? I I I in for for the 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 app I just use the the you know it it'll speak it out like okay that's really handy and it, I, I because I'm using Android I can also use the select to speak so if I want to read whatever's on it I can highlight it and it'll read it out like yeah that's really good that's really handy um yeah, yeah. it it seems like an interesting uh concept and as, as we said this is something that you know people need to discuss uh if, if they have diabetes and all that they need to discuss this with a diabetic doctor but i think it's, it's interesting because we were looking there earlier on at, at you know weighing scales and stuff like that because you know weighing scales can be difficult sometimes for those with sight loss and similarly glucose monitoring is in a similar position in that respect but it's good to know that there are solutions out there um it's really cool to know and you seem to have found something that in your case even with uh, a, a relatively low level of vision you've found something that works for you oh yeah that's it's ideal now I'll, I'll I'll tell you the one thing I would say is is that it's I I I I know a couple of kids that have diabetes like yeah and it it is a lifesaver for them like whereas when I was a kid at two and a half three four five up up along like you were measuring the day before his blood sugars because of you were doing the urine test like yes yeah. now I I could see it all that kind of fact but realistically it has come so far in the last kind of 50 years that kids could ne- now manage it more or less themselves obviously with the the, the input of the doctors and stuff like that yes, like. Yeah. but it, it is a fantastic setup for kids with diabetes like 
Yeah, even in, in, in schools and things like that. You know, you're not yeah. always going to yeah. have a, a parent or an SNA about, for example, to always do, you know, you know, a blood test or, or traditionally, I guess, urine samples. You know, it, it's quite invasive in that way. Uh, so this yeah. enables yeah. A, a child too to, to do it, as you say, relatively speaking, on their own, which is really cool. Um, yeah, and, and and again, like like I was kind of saying about the dad's one, it, it's the same that they're on the continuous the the, the CGM, yeah. the continuous glucose glucose monitoring, but that will warn them if they're going down, and it will warn them if they're going high. Yes, yeah, that's so fantastic. So it, 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 it's on the phone. It's letting them know, hey, you're going low. You need to take something quick, or you're going high. If you're on an insulin pump, now which they may or may not be, it will give you the darkest insulin accordingly, like. Yes, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Jur, are you into tech generally? Would you look at uh, a lot of different technologies? You you mentioned there that you use the Select to Speak on the Android. You you'd be uh, a fairly tech savvy lad, then I'd say. Would you be? Uh, I I I I I I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I I, I my my description. You can ask Daniel Dunn there anytime you want. I I could stand beside iron and break iron without touching it. So I'm the same with tech. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, no, I'm not great with technology, but I do, I, I get by. That and you know what? That's all you need to at times, isn't it? It's uh, it's good though that you've yeah. found you know a quality solution there in a case like the glucose monitoring and you know the the uh, speak selection and stuff like that. You're finding stuff that works for you, and that's all it needs, isn't it? That's exactly it, yeah. There you go. Well, Jer, listen, thank you so much uh, for joining us on, on this uh, health tech episode for Talking Technology. We, we'll have to bring you on again at some stage because uh, it's, it's a really Absolutely fascinating no uh, it's a fascinating old product. And uh, yeah, do keep us uh, keep in the loop with us because it, it's one of these ones where these things can be difficult for people with sight loss, but uh, there are solutions out there. So thank you so much for sharing your solution to it. Absolutely no problem at all. Nice one. Fantastic. So uh, if you do have any questions, we, we do get questions in from time to time in particular about things like the Dexcom and so on. Um, we answer a, a lot of questions around those sort of things. So if you do have questions on them, email labs at ncbi.ie. We're not doctors, but hey, if it's tech stuff you need, uh, we might be able to provide some solution there. Maybe it's voiceover training to use those different apps that you need. Whatever the case may be, do get in touch with us. The number as well is 1-800-911-110. 1-800-911-110. But with that said, it's Talking Technology News Time. This is Talking Technology News. So, hello and welcome to Talking Technology News. Uh, I'm Daniel Dunn with the latest. So, there is a new version of NVDA after being released. The latest version is now 2023.2 and it's got some exciting new bug fixes and new features. So, this release introduces the add-on store, which replaces the add-ons manager. In the add-on store, you can now browse, search and install and update the community add-ons. If you want to change how NVDA works in a certain environment, this is now a cool way to do it. The new update is available from the NV Access uh, website right now, or alternatively, you'll get an update message when you start your computer. In other news, NCBI Soundscape Community app has been released. We've spoken in detail about the app on the podcast before, but you can now download it by searching for Soundscape Community on the App Store. The app has all the same features as its Microsoft predecessor, and with the old app now effectively after shutting down, the Soundscape Community app is the better option to have on your phone. It's great to see this app getting released, and hopefully we'll see uh, continued development going forward. Finally, for now, there's big news in the smart home world, as the popular Philips Hue devices are finally getting set to get matter support. Uh, The Verge uh, report that a software update will roll out in September, so sometime this month, letting users connect their Hue systems with other matter devices and apps. This means that every existing Philips Hue product will now work with matter all the way back to their 2012 light bulb. 
We have an explainer on Matter on our website, but basically it means you can pick up a product and know it's going to work in your setup. If you're using Amazon, Google, Apple or a mix of all three to run your smart home, Matter has got you covered. You can find that explainer and more great technology content on our website and in the NCBI Labs technology newsletter, which you can sign up for in, in my NCBI account on the NCBI website. For now, though, it's back to David. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, that's a really uh, fascinating one about NVDA because I actually remember, I have a vivid memory a few years ago um, of Eric Damery from, they were called Freedom Scientific at the time, the developers of JAWS. And mm -hmm. uh, he came there to the NCBI offices on Withworth Road. And I remember having a conversation with Eric Damery after the, um, after the like seminar that he was doing. He was demoing uh, new versions of JAWS at the time. Um, and I remember suggesting to him exactly this, like an add-on store. They call them scripts. Yeah. Um, yes. But I remember suggesting some form of script store. And to my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think JAWS has done that to date. Uh, a lot of the scripts and so on are still sold by third parties. But it's fascinating to see NVDA getting into this game really quite extensively because it's incredible what you can do with additional scripts for things like nvda isn't it absolutely yeah um like they can they can really expand the functionality of, of the software so you know and um, like it's well worth i suppose maybe taking a look now with nvda see what this is what this is going to be about um even just to you know, download and see see what it's about. It's it's a free piece of software. Um, I think it I think it's going to be great because, you know, there's always something there that you're trying to do, and your screen reader, mm, it, it's not really built into the core of it. And somebody has come up with a way of doing it. You know, a little piece of a little piece of add-on software, and um, you know, getting getting those features in can can solve the problem, you know? Yeah, for sure. And, it's, it's and what thing. I like there as well is the fact that you can uh, start customizing the, um, you know, the different apps settings in it. That seems to be good. Yeah, there's a lot of things in NVDA time and time again it's getting more and more competitive with jaws i know we've had this debate before yes <laughs> but it's uh it, it's a fascinating one to watch because i wonder now will this uh you know spur the the jaws team on to introduce you know uh some form of an add-on store to their product because there are so many companies selling you know scripts for everything from like improving websites uh i've seen mm -hmm. ones for like improving like, accessibility of music charts and then there's ones mm -hmm. that like totally overhaul the file manager like there's everything and anything typing tutors for jaws it's insane what's out there like so yeah you'd be really curious to see what actually comes of this but there you go daniel thank you very much for that no problem david thank you so let's head over now to JP for Quick Picks. It's time for NCBI Labs Quick Picks. JP, how are we? Um, so yeah, David, Quick Quick Picks this week. Uh, yes. We have two so, items, I believe. The first, first of which I'm particularly interested in, I know you've been trying out, is the EVE motion sensor. The EVE motion sensor. Yeah, this is a fascinating bit of kit. Um we the the eve motion sensor uh it actually uses uh daniel was talking about matter there in talking technology news um it actually uses <coughs> matter at least the latest versions use matter to communicate so you can add them to uh your amazon alexa to your uh google assistant or to your uh apple home kit setup so i've added ours to apple home kit um and basically it gives you two sensors that you can access with uh, Apple HomeKit. So first is the occupancy sensor. So this is the motion sensor. So you can use it to detect if someone's in a room. So you can set it up to do things like turn on the lights if someone walks into the room, things like that. Um, if you've got smart lights, obviously that might be a cool solution for you. But one of the really cool ones, uh, JP, yeah. is it has a light sensor. And how this works is hmm. basically it continuously monitors the amount of light in a room. 
So you can then ask your smart speaker about it. You can set automations uh, based on the amount of light in a room. So, for example, I could ask, you know, I could ask Siri, uh, you know, what's the light level in the kitchen? And it'll say something to the effect of it's very dark in the kitchen at the moment at 20 lux. And uh, it's really cool then. So you can tell based on you know, things like increased sunlight, for example, you might need to turn on the lights as much or, you know, uh, maybe even for someone who has no vision or no light perception. I think it's a really cool solution that it might be able to indicate to someone with no vision, hey, there is actually light in this room. Um, You know, there's some really interesting use cases for it. Uh, but it was a, a product I was uh, playing around with and yeah. I thought it was kind of cool. Um, it's and not, two, yeah, two, qu- two questions. Sorry, if I have come in. Two questions. So, well, first of all, I think it's fantastic. Even for security. So if no one's at home, I gather if, if it detects movement that it, it'll indicate, I presume, on your on your phone. You can set it you know to send that a notification, home, yeah. Or that there's, there's, at least there's Zoom at home. So a security device, fantastic. Yeah, um, and, it, and I was going to put one in a things. shed or something. Exactly. Um, set up, was that straightforward? And also, where is the best place do you think or would you advise to locate these devices in the home as, as a sensor? Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting question. So on the setup front, first of all, uh, it, it was seamless. It was really, really seamless. You just uh, scan a, a code, which it isn't... Uh, usually this can be something that's very difficult for people with sight loss. This, I didn't find it to be a, a poor experience at all. It, it was almost automatic. I just kind of turned the device around a few times in front of the sensor and it picked it up st- or in front of the camera on my phone, I should say. And it yes. picked it up straight away. Um but in terms of uh, like where to place it, so they recommend, uh, you know, a certain height. You're going to want this a fair bit off the ground. Um, so what we did in our house was we put it on top of the uh, the cabinets in the kitchen. Um, yeah. So yeah. we, we put, popped it up there. It, it's quite a small device. Like I would say it's, Goodness, it, it's hard to know like what to compare it to, but it would be about the size of, um, about the size of a digestive biscuit if it was square, but it's a bit mm. thicker. So it, it'd be like four or five digestive biscuits stacked on top of each other, yeah. but square. I know th- I, th- that's a terrible okay. like analogy, no, but I think it's yeah, it's good analogy. I like um, I like the description. Yeah, so. <laughs> It's got it's flat on most sides, but then the the top surface uh, and and the bit that you want like facing out, so the part where the sensors are, that's got a little hump in the middle of it, a, a little kind of glass uh, hump uh, that you can just place, uh, usually facing forward. We aren't actually using ours for motion sensing. We really just wanted the light detector for nice. yeah. uh, different capabilities. Some people yeah. uh, might not be comfortable with having a motion sensor in the house, yeah. which is totally fair enough. Um, well, it's, it's interesting. I, I, I have from the, the Virtual Technology Club in Dublin. I do have hmm. queries coming in often from people saying, oh, like getting up in the middle of the night, maybe some individual with low vision yeah. and I'd like some sort of a sensor. This, this could be a good solution for someone like that. Absolutely. And I mean, you can yeah. set it to do basically anything like these can trigger things like Amazon Alexa routines or, yeah. or you know, okay. um, home kit scenes or anything like that. So yeah. they're incredibly versatile. We, we've talked in the newsletter before about like how versatile, you know, things like flick buttons are. And these are similar in that respect yeah. because they let you trigger a wild amount of things. So, uh, yeah, yeah, really, really powerful. I, I love that. Good. Yeah, there's vast, vast uh, opportunities uh, to do things with this. They're so customizable. Absolutely, um, for sure. So, yeah, that's excellent. And not that expensive I think we, we have a either. They're second quick quick, don't be. Quid in oh, sorry, sorry, after, sorry, David, again, say again. Uh, yeah, they're in and around 30 quid, so they're not like massively No, uh, expensive not going to break either. the bank. No, for sure. Yeah. And I believe we have a second quick pick today, which as is very much related to the topic of of accessible health, which is the Well Tory app for the Apple iPhone. And I believe this is an app that lets you keep your health information secure in one place on your device. So I think Joe, you have some information on this app for us today. Yeah. So um the Well Tory app, you can um have it installed on your Apple Watch as well. So um 
Medicaid monitor monitors the different rhythms of your heart rate, so your uh, parasympathetic rhythm and that kind of stuff. So it's like the rhythms that affect um, stress, really, and um, that would be caused by different issues, whether you're having an argument or it could be just general stress, and it'll come back and give you a report. So the report would sound something like this if I was um, open to well Tory app. SKNA, 24 minutes. Apple Watch measurement. What's in this report? These are raw heart rate variability metrics from your Apple Watch measurement. They are used by res- details button expand button. Sorry. Your autonomic nervous system is adapting to stress, but using up a lot of resources in the process. Details button expand button. So, Strain normal range. These are back button. Oh, back here a little bit. Sorry, guys. Detail, 20, SDNN. Strain. Your autonomic nervous system is adapting to stress, but using up a lot of resources in the process. Details button expand. 57 BPM. Heart rate. Low normal range. 45,000 watt alert. Low battery. 10 percent. Low power. Close button. These are raw heart rate variability metrics from your Apple Watch measurement. They are used by researchers and are based on population averages established by the European Society of Cardiology. These metrics are personalized and may not accurately reflect how you feel. Check your fuel tank to see how your body is doing. Details button expand. 24 is SDNN. Strained normal range. Your autonomic nervous system is adapting to stress, but using up a lot of resources in the process. Details button ex- 57 B. Heart rate. Low normal range. Your heart rate is on the low end, but still within the norm. Yeah, so that's the kind of um, feedback you get from the app. Just to give you an example, so my heart rate is in a normal range, but a little bit lower, probably could do it getting a bit fitter, basically, the app is telling you. But it, it does have a news feed, you see, and the news feed will update every day. And um, if there's any strange things happening, you will get notifications. This is it's, it's very accurate, apparently. So there have been reports of people having maybe um, a, a cardiac problem, um, be notified about it and go into the hospital and then maybe having to get a stint in or something. Just you, you get notified yeah. fight in yeah. time. So there's lots of things there that, that and it connects up with the health app on your phone. And if you had any other Fitbit app or so, something like that, it'll connect up to those as well. So um, the fitness app really and the health cool. app, it connects with all those and collaborates all the information into one place and gives you a report every day, basically. So I, I think it, it's, it's, it's a great app and it's fairly readable with voiceover there is obviously as i said earlier with david with, with, with apps in this space seem to have a lot of unlabeled buttons there is a yeah. couple of unlabeled buttons but in general it's very readable and i think it's um it's an app for people with apple watches uh it's worth investigating is it free joe it is free but there is a subscription based service built into the app if you want more personal recommendations so it's kind of a coaching thing you know but um i don't think there's any need to get that unless you you really desire it um because you do have the news feed and i, th- I think it's enough of, of um it's enough of, of a monitor just to have an extra little bit of reassurance yeah there's loads of those kind of things out there i know withings has one as well and then there's apple fitness plus as well if you wanted apple's own uh fitness products so there's loads of those different subscriptions out there but it's really cool to know that you can use it for free it seems like a handy tool to one probably worth getting if it's for free you might as well yeah well tori give it a try and uh see if you can i think it's i think it's quite good and it does give you a bit of encouragement to um steer things in the right direction that's the main thing yeah for sure absolutely uh jp is it an app you'll be getting I uh, would be interested, right? Similar to the sub- subscription models like health apps, I, I know I, I have a Fitbit watch and there is the option for me to upgrade to Fitbit Premium. I think every day I'm receiving emails from Fitbit to say upgrade to Premium for, I think it might be, I don't know, a five or a month or something like that to get like individual training plans and more features and so forth. But uh, I probably will hold off for now uh, on 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 upgrading, but however, I will be interested to try out the the free version of the of the uh, Weltori app for sure. But it sounds of it's a very interesting one. Joe is, is is telling us today. Yeah, there you go. Uh, how do you find the Fitbit generally? We're on the Health Tech it, podcast. Yeah, so well, Joe, Fitbit I find it is is a great watch. I am um, the last. I think David, the last three or four watches I've had have been Fitbits. I've gone through different models. Um, there's a Fitbit Charge. I think I've gone into the Fitbit Versa one and two. I'm now I'm using what's called a Fitbit Sense. Um, oh, that's the advanced is, one, isn't it? Yeah, it's one of the more recent models. I have to say, you have to commend Fitbit on one thing, which is their customer service. I have had some issues with previous uh, watches with Fitbit where they're broken or something has has happened on the display, and they need to take them back. And actually, and those are 
that generally that's when I go, I go and upgrade the, the the next model. So that's why I'm using the Fitbit Sense now. And ultimately, what they're doing is, is they're they're fitness trackers. They're giving you your your steps, and uh, they're giving you things like your calorie count, uh, activity levels, and so forth. Uh, what I do really like about it, it's it's and it's so different to the Apple Watch and this is kind of its compatibility with. Uh, you know, your smartphone. So it's giving you information, for example, on, you know, text messages, phone calls coming in. Uh, there's music controls to the Spotify app, which which I really enjoy. And then things like Fitbit Pay, which is so handy. So if I'm out and I've got my wallet, I can use my, uh, my, my the wallet app in, in, in the Fitbit Watch to pay. That's really A good. bit like Apple They have Apple that on Pay. Apple Watch too, but it's good yeah, to see that coming to I think platforms. one of the big pro of the Fitbit, I would say, is the battery life. Um, that it can last about six to seven days on a full charge, which That's is really good for for you know a smartwatch of, of any of any kind. Um, there's all these kind of different like bells and whistles with the Fitbit Sense. It's very much a health watch, so it's like to have, for example, EDA, which is I think it's electrodermal activity to measure like little tiny like electrical changes in your skin. That's supposed to tell you how stressed or or not you are. Um, and then there's ECG, your electrocardiogram records give you. Like signals from your heart, if any diff, you know, issues are in heart, it's a bit like what Joe was saying with the Weltori app. It would advise you to, you know, to get get checked out. Um, and there's all these sorts of like breathing exercise available through our Relax app. The downside, I would say, is that there's no built-in screen reader, and I'm kind of surprised in a way, because you know, as a low vision device, this could be okay because we can customize the the display to the Fitbit app. The downside, however, as I said, is no. Uh, screen reader. And I'm surprised because Google actually purchased Fitbit a bit over a year ago, a huge figure. I think it was probably about $2 billion. And you would expect maybe with, with the influence of Google, they may have incorporated talk you know, a talkback talk screen reader. Yeah. Exactly. And maybe it's on the roadmap, maybe it's to come. Right now, it's not there. But it's, I mean, there's such a market there that Fitbit's available with a screen reader. So they're supposed to be a much more popular device for people who have sight loss. Um, another as well, little nice little add-on is that there are Fitbits for for children as well. Um, I think it's a Fitbit Ace. I think Joe, we were talking about this recently. I'm not sure if you were considering purchasing a Fitbit Ace. Yeah, my my child has a has a Fitbit yeah. Ace. Um, it's it's a great device again. It keeps him motivated, and if he hits thirty thousand yeah. steps, he thinks he's king of the world. Yeah. So yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah, so it's all all I call age groups. Our, our, our case would for um yeah I'll consider it for for my my kids as well at some point when they're a bit older <laughs> yeah that's yeah, you, get li- you get little badges and stuff if when you've yeah. completed tasks and yeah. um uh, goals you know <clears throat> mm-hmm. you yeah. mentioned there you know it not having like a screen reader but you also mentioned there that Google uh, acquisition yeah, they, like they did. it's it's interesting because Google also have their own Pixel watches. Uh, I don't know whether TalkBack yeah. is available on those, but you'd imagine that those will start to yeah. share features in time, potentially. You expect um, that. Yeah, so, like these, yeah, these it's have been be like native to watch. features to the, the, the smartwatches, exactly. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. interesting to watch. Hopefully. That acquisition, by the way, we were, we were fairly close, JP. It was $2.1 billion, Ooh, according wow. to Google. So, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, if Google is saying it, it's probably true. Uh, yeah, but there you go. <laughs> That's a, wow. it's a, a pricey purchase, but hey, the, the Fitbit's a huge yeah. company at the same time. I'm sure Google have their reasons. Um, yeah. So yeah, really, really cool. Well, JP and Great. Joe, thank you so much uh, for telling us about those quick picks. Some really cool stuff there, all around uh, health tech uh, as well. Uh, so yeah. A fantastic show. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much to JP, Joe, Daniel, and Jer for joining us uh, during the podcast. And thanks to everyone who's helped out uh, behind the scenes as well. Uh, we will be back next week. Yes, we are going to be back next week because there is an Apple event coming up. Um, the new iPhones and stuff like that. It's all expected to be announced next week. So we're not going to be doing a podcast on Teams, but there will be a podcast in the podcast feeds. So watch out for that next week. We'll be talking about all of the things from the Apple event. You're getting a bit of a bonus episode. So do look forward to that next week. Alrighty, that is it for now. If you need support from NCBI Labs, as always, send an email to labs at ncbi.ie or call 1-800-911-110. 1-800-911-110. That's it for now. 
Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back next week. But in the meantime, stay safe, have fun, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Talking Technology Podcast with NCBI Labs. If you would like to support our show, you can visit donate.ncbi.ie. The NCBI Labs Talking Technology Podcast is proudly sponsored by IA Labs, the market leader in the provision of digital accessibility services.